what you're looking at is what's called a cloud chamber. And it shows us particles of radioactivity that are flying through the air. So what happens is that uh, when a radioactive particle passes through that substance in there, it leaves a little streak behind it. So every little line was a particle. And today, we are going to interview Professor Daniela Bordoletto, who studies high energy particles. And she uses the Fermi, um, goes up to the Fermi lab up near Chicago and smashes things together to see what parts they fall into. And in particular, she's looking for particularly heavy and particularly high energy or high temperature particles. So today, we get to hear what an actual scientist is doing with her actual research. One of the main goals of my research program is to study, uh, to search, to find the Higgs particle. And the Higgs particle is related with the mechanism of mass. Uh, you might think that you are very familiar with the concept of mass, but in fact physicists have not really understood and, uh, what can generate mass until we postulated a very interesting model in the 70s that we called the standard model of particle and interactions. According to this model, uh, there is a field all around us which is called the Higgs field. And uh, there is a particle associated to the field uh, which is called the Higgs particle. And we believe that a particle is massive if it interacts a lot with this Higgs field and is light if it doesn't interact a lot with the Higgs field. For example, this helps us explaining the difference between the electron and the muon. Uh, so um, my student and I are searching for this particle, for the Higgs particle at Fermilab, and we have some chance to find it there. But if we don't find it there, we are going to go to CERN uh, to try to expand our reach. Okay, at the collider, we can also probe for a new symmetry of uh, nature that might allow us uh, to find a unified description of all the forces of nature. This was really Einstein's uh, dream. One of the most promising theory is called supersymmetry or SUSY. And it was developed in the framework of what are called grand unified theories, since it's a framework that tries to unify all of the interactions that we know to exist. Um, SUSY expects, uh, predicts, that for every particle that we observe in nature, there is a shadow particle, which is called a SUSY partner of the particles that we observe. So, for example, in nature you are going to have the electrons and Susie predicts that there will be another particle called the selectron. In, in nature we know that we have quarks, Susie predicts that we should observe other particles called sporks. We think that we are not able to see these Susie particles because they are going to be very massive and that's why they have not yet been produced. On the other hand, cosmologists are are really uh, very puzzled at the moment because they observe in the rotational motion of galaxy a form of matter that is not visible, which they call dark matter because they don't know what it is. And it's dark because we cannot see it. Uh, so we believe, many theorists believe, that uh, dark matter is in fact just a Susy particle and that this Susy particle is called a neutralina. My student and I are also searching for the neutralino and in fact in the data that we have taken at Fermilab we think that we might have observed one event which is consistent with the neutralino. Unfortunately it's also consistent with what we expect already from the standard model and so we are not able to, uh, to really be sure of that what we've seen is the first evidence for SUSY. Um, but we keep searching in the data that we are producing at Fermilab and we will not stop there. As soon as this other collider at CERN will start taking data, we will move there and look again for the neutralino and hopefully understand what is the nature of dark matter. So we've learned about two particles that Professor Bordoletto is looking for. We've learned about the neutrino which is a supersymmetric particle, or a SUSY particle, and the Higgs particle. And the Higgs particle is just particularly extremely heavy particle. That's hard to see. 
And if Fermilab and the particle accelerator Fermilab is not powerful enough, then we can go to the particle accelerator in Europe, and which is coming online pretty soon, to see if we can have higher energy help us see some of these heavier particles. I'd love for you to talk about why you got into physics and say, how did you get interested in, in what you do? I decided to become a, a physicist after reading a book when I was about 12. The title of this book was a 30 year uh, of the revolutionized physics, the story of uh, quantum mechanics. And it was written by a, a Russian physicist, um, Gamov. And uh, the thing that stimulated me at that point was that not only that this book recalls the history of quantum mechanics, but also put the life of the scientists like uh, Fermi, Rutherford. And uh, I, I really felt really drawn in this kind of revolution and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, then later on now I, I see the extreme benefits that quantum mechanics has brought to humanity uh, from laser to quantum computing and electronic chips.